back live here on our big broadcast, coast to coast and border to border on AMFM247.com. Of course, tune in, iTunes. Uh, our site, of course, is JiggyJaguar.com. But without further ado, we have a, uh, a great interview today. This is going to be fantastic. I have ever since I put this together. I have been like a kid on Christmas, eagerly anticipating talking to our guest today, Peter Hudson. How are you, sir? I'm very well, and thank you for inviting me. It was a, a surprise. Well, I'll tell you, um, several months ago, which is kind of strange, I, 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 I use this radio program a lot of times to interview people that I've seen on TV, seen in the movies, uh, you know, follow on social media, and I seen, uh, I started watching uh, a little program called Highlander fairly recently, and you popped up on there, and I'll tell you, I don't know if you know anything about the pro wrestling business or anything like that, but you are the biggest heel in the history of this show, my man. I, I just, you're, you're, you're a bad guy's bad guy. And just just watching you on this show, and then, uh, you know, I was just taken back by the acting ability, I guess. Uh, you brought so much to this character on this show, and then, you know, just doing what I do, I went and I followed up, and I'm like, he's got to have done more than just being James Horton on Highlander. And you have done amazing things. Just uh, and and then I find uh, on Wikipedia and I find on Internet Movie Database that uh, you you you're just an amazing guy. How did you get started in acting and you know role playing and all these things, Peter? Well, James, I. I, I... Yes, I kind of, um, the reason I think that uh, you you hadn't come across me uh, as a kind of household name is that I, I have kind of slipped between the cracks in the, in the, in the uh, industry and in life in general. Although I've done a lot of things, as you say, I, I've tended to be, to live in places which didn't uh, immediately or superficially at any rate lend themselves to, to, a career as a uh, as, as an actor yeah uh, but i've always worked so um highlander was something that came up uh, uh it was kind of serendipity and uh, uh it was a wonderful role that kind of evolved as we went along yes and and i'll I, and i'll I, I haven't answered your question which no was, no 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 you're good you I, you I begin um i wanted to be an actor when i was a young guy uh uh, I trained to be a teacher, and I'd gone through university. I had a lot of yep. support from my father, who didn't have much money, and uh, I kind of promised him that I would go into the teaching business and see if it worked. Uh, and I always had this desire to, to act, uh, uh, and I, I did a lot of uh, amateur theater and so on. And um, then at a kind of critical moment in my life, um, a divorce and everything was up for grabs, and I thought, what do I really want to do? And I ch So I began quite late, really, Yeah. in my late 20s. Well, I'll tell you, just from watching you on that show, and heck, just listening to you here in the, the past three minutes, you are quite the orator, my friend. You have, you have got the, uh, you, you know what the heck you're doing with, with the English language. I, uh, I, I, I love the fact that I asked you, one tiny little question, and you gave me a, a huge answer. I think that is great. Well, thank you very much. What you mean is I, I'm, I'm kind of verbose. <laughs> there you go. There we go. <laughs> so, but study... Like talking too, James. I'm oh, like very much so. <laughs> I've been to several of your shows um, uh, in order to know, you know, how this could go. And uh, yes. I listened to your interview of Adrian and... Um, and you have a great gift too, so there we go. Well, and I'll tell you that that is what is really what is really fun about this show, and any interview that I do, 
is I will talk to, I will set out with the goal of, you know, I always tell everybody, 15 to 30 minutes for the interview. And like with Adrian, I only had 10 minutes. They told me when, when, when we did that, they were like, well, he's on a time crunch. You're only going to have 10 minutes. And we got to talking. And then I realized later, oh, my God, we've talked for an hour. <laughs> Well, so he had a lot, he had a lot to, to recount as well. I mean, he's done a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. So yeah. this this is so, I, I don't know if you would say strange, but I find it, I, I guess, maybe amazing that comparing, like, your career and comparing his career and you guys are great actors and great, you know, um, speakers I, I i guess you would say and then you guys end up on this science fiction show i just find it amazing that uh well it's great i mean for 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 me it was it was a great adventure because uh first of all um i was it was quite early on in my in my acting life really and uh uh, I was only meant to, I think, be on for one episode. Oh, really? Literally, you know. Uh, wow. At least there was no mention to me of the fact there could be more than one gig uh, uh, as a kind of guest. Yeah. And and uh, it was with Roger Daltrey playing, uh, who was on the show, the guy from The Who, you know. So yeah. that was a thrill yep. as well. Because he was one of my kind of heroes from another chapter in my life. <laughs> and... Um, and uh, and then and then uh, they liked what I did, and uh, it was an interesting role, kind of ambiguous, and uh, it it evolved from there. They said we'd like you to do some more, and the joke I made was that every time they ran out of ideas, they called me up for a couple of episodes, <laughs> gave me time to think. You know? <laughs> well, uh, but um, it, there was some. What was interesting about that role was that. Uh, uh, I found out about things, uh, things about myself as it went along. For example, I suddenly discovered that I had a daughter, uh, which I didn't know before previously. Yeah. So the role kind of uh, had a kind of organic quality to it, and also he he was actually um, he was quite a subtle character in the sense that there was something good about him. He was a kind of fallen angel, I, I guessed, and uh, yeah. I think that helped me. That idea helped me. He had. I think I said uh, on Facebook recently that I, going through my archives, I came across the fact that I'd been killed an inordinate number of times, I think 12 <laughs> times on screen, and quite a few of them in Highlander, obviously. Yeah. And uh, that there's something actually extremely salutary about being killed on, on screen that... Uh, when you come back, you're not quite the same as when you when you left, and it, and it was a that serious uh, a serious observation of my own reactions to being dead on on screen, and actually kind of driving yourself into a situation where you you be, you almost believe you are. Uh, yes, uh, and uh, there was something about that character. It was as though he'd been to the other side and and come back. Yes, well, and, and that, that helped me. That acting technique uh, is is just amazing that you were able to pull from that, and I think maybe it made it a, a better experience and a and a better you know character development, like you were saying there. I think that's great. Well, thank you. I mean, uh, I was lucky, and I the people around me were very. Uh, Adrian is a very generous guy who who tried to make the. Uh, his fellow actors and actresses uh, uh, go beyond their their normal limits, rather than yes. quite often you come across lead actors who who are a little nervous of of losing space. You know, <laughs> Adrian is quite the opposite. Now, Peter, with this with this role, uh, did you when 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 you got the call and 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 you were told you know, about this show, you mentioned that just a second ago, every time you think they ran out of ideas, they gave you a call. Uh, did you know 
how how much in in advance of ahead of time did you know that as far as where the actor was you know where where you were going to be going with with this role because I know like with the Marvel movies and some of these different things nowadays or even I remember reading about reading back with the Sopranos they didn't let any of these these actors and actresses know how far along the character was going to go because they didn't want anybody spoiling it or anything. Obviously, back then, we didn't have all this sometimes social media that I sometimes detest. But were, were you told in advance, hey, here's what we're going to do with the character? Or No, no, no but because I wasn't really a regular in the yeah. sense that I didn't have a contract over over the over a year or two years or whatever. Yeah, and and uh, so I, I was happy to get a call and say, uh, would you be available for a couple of episodes in 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 two or three months' time? Uh, and then I would get the script and I'd discover that I had um, elements of my life that I had either forgotten or never known about. Which yeah. so it was um, <laughs> it was an interesting it was an interesting. Uh, evolution if you like yeah we have got it obviously to be in at the to be asked to be in at the end of it where where he where the character becomes a kind of symbolic uh, representation of evil or uh, um uh and something much more um not spiritual exactly but um something uh more science fictional anyway yeah so we have got Peter Hudson with us today. He joins us live here in our program. Now, how has over the years the <laughs> this is always something I'm always very entertained by. How have the fans treated you over the years? Because I know that just from being around all these various industries that I've done interviews in, whether it be music or um hell the adult industry all these different things even movies and, and tv shows if you play an iconic character or you have you know something like this you're in forever uh these people's minds and you probably get you know lots of requests for i i don't know so much with covid nowadays but i mean like comic cons and things like this uh, how how are you seen by the fans, my friend? Well, I, th I quite frankly, James, I um, I worked quite a lot with the f the fans uh, immediately after the series, during and immediately after the series. Yeah. Uh, but I, one of my uh, personal traits is that I'm not a great I'm not a great member of the of the industry in the sense that. I, I'm. Uh, I guess I'm not a loner exactly, but I'm not uh, a great networker, and I'm not a great. Uh, 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 how, how should I put it? My social life and my professional life are pretty separate. Yeah. And so uh, uh, I haven't. Many many of my colleagues say to me, you know, you haven't worked hard enough on your career from that <laughs> perspective. <laughs> Uh, I've always put my family first, or at least my personal life. Uh, That's awesome. Uh, first. That's and actually so uh, I haven't, in fact, to come finally to answer your question, yeah. I haven't been a very good communicator with the, the fan base, and, and I haven't uh, worked to keep that going. And I, that's why I was thrilled to get invited to, to, to the upcoming um, com uh, uh, for Highlander, uh, it's the first one for n a number of years, so yeah, uh, there we are. I think that's uh, awesome. But, I think that's great. But I, 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 my reaction with the fans was that it was a huge um, education for me. Yes, uh, I realized to what extent what you just said is true. That uh, these <clears throat> series and um, and even even uh, features. It affect people's lives and oh, become yeah. part of infrastructure, and uh, it, it was a very humbling experience to to <clears throat> to be present at a number of those cons uh, back in the in the 1990s. Uh, for me, uh, it made me understand a lot about human nature, <clears throat> and it made me feel very humble, actually. Well, I'll tell you, just going to some of these some of these 
expos and comic cons and some of these things over the years just seeing the reaction is what i always find great because you know you 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 see someone who had a bit part on a show or you see someone who or like you had several episodes and was part of a big story arc people just go nuts for you guys <laughs> they will stand in lines for hours i i seen one year at the um one of these comic cons i seen a, a line wrapped around the building for people to meet lou ferrigno from the incredible hulk series <laughs> just amazing yeah. well, we need we need these stories we need stories and uh, yeah uh, uh and tv is is the most maybe the the, the easiest access to to long-running stories uh, that we have today and uh uh big responsibility for people who write for television to do something that's uh, of some value yes yes what one of the things that i find amazing just looking at at your career uh you've done a little bit of everything you've done voice work you've done you know plays you've 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 acted you've directed you've done a little bit of everything uh what has been the funnest thing as far as what you've done so far in your career and what you have coming up in your career? Yeah, well, I, I think uh, um, I always really wanted to be a writer. I mean, so that, that was really why I moved to France. I had this sort of dream that I would be the next James Joyce or, or <laughs> Ernest Hemingway. And, that, um, and who knows? Maybe I was, I was right. But for the moment, I haven't been... My novels... I've written two novels. They haven't been published, uh, but I've always written, put it that way, and, yeah. and that's very important to me, which fits, which kind of fits into my more solitary side, I suppose. Uh, and um, the acting, well, acting such a such a, a, a complex business, but there's obviously a a kind of sense that you need some return. Uh, um, when you're when you're acting, you're looking for some kind of uh, some kind of uh, a look from the spectator that makes yes. you feel you have the right to be there. So there's something. So I was I, was, I almost said immature. It's not exactly that, but it's <laughs> there's something about um, a lack of um, a lack of self a lack of security, basically, which is very yeah. important for 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 acting in general. I think. Although other actors might tell me that I'm talking out of turn, but um, <laughs> uh, so what was the question? Sorry. No, 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 no. I love this. I love this. You, you, you are, you are amazing when it when it when it comes to just being such an orator. I love this. Um, so, so Peter, I also doing some research. I find all sorts of things on the web. I don't know if some of this stuff is even true, but one of the things that I did discover, and I wish to God I would have found, I would have remember where I wrote, where I found this, I could go back to it. Are you a beekeeper? Yes, that's true. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I was fascinated that. by this when I saw this because I am, you know. I know a lot. A lot of people see some of our interviews, and and a lot of people think that I'm kind of a barbarian when it comes to different things. But then they see my Instagram with all my cats and various animals and all these things. And I have always been fascinated by bees. And I've always said that at some point or another, I was going to take up beekeeping. And when I saw that all the different things that you're involved in, and then the fact that you do bees. I'm like, oh my God, I gotta ask this guy about this. I've gotta ask Peter Hudson about this. <laughs> well, it's important. It, it was an important chapter in my in my life. Although uh, I had a house for a while in the in the countryside in in Burgundy in in France, yes. and and I toyed with the idea for quite a number of years of of actually just being there. Wow! Uh, and during that period, I did a a training in Paris. And I got a diploma in in beekeeping, wow. in one of the, the the oldest 
uh, beekeeping academy in Paris, which actually <laughs> that is fascinating. You, you come to Paris, you must go to the the uh, the Jardin Luxembourg, which is right in the middle of Paris, yes. where there are still eleven hives or twelve, I think, and uh, you can buy a pot of honey about this big for many euros. Um, wow! But uh, they they still teach and they have a serious uh, uh, training program uh, and I did that for for a year and got my diploma and um, and then I had a couple of hives but I wasn't a, I I quickly became rather suspicious of beekeepers um, not as individuals but as okay. as uh, as an activity because I realised that um, we're very ignorant about about insects uh, uh, in general. Um, my father was a, was a, a keen um, lepidopterist, and I was brought up with uh, butterflies and moths hatching yeah. in 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 airing cupboards in the house and cages everywhere and stuff. And uh, I quickly realised that we're so obsessed with the honeybee, chiefly because I think we're interested in the honey, uh, or at least. There's there's a, been a very close link with human human activity since the Middle Ages with honey and yes. before with the the, the Egyptians uh, and um, but we actually ignore the rest of the insects uh, and a guy who arrives in the middle of the countryside and puts down two hundred uh, beehives yeah and those bees thousands of them go off and feed in the local area, they are actually um, eliminating probably hundreds of other species of bees which do not produce honey, but which are just as important in terms of pollinization and so on. Um, and so I, I, I realized I didn't want to have hundreds of hives. Okay. So I had two. <laughs> uh, uh, and, uh, uh, but it is a fascinating, fascinating activity. And they're, they're, they're brilliant uh, insects. I mean, they're so well organized, contrary to human beings. Yes. Well, I know that there last couple years, there's been more of a, I guess, um, emphasis put on bees because of the fact that bees are slowly, which just terrifies the crap out of me, dying off because of all the all these damn phones and technology and all this nonsense that everyone's addicted to now. Uh, when when you mention people are kind of obsessed with the honeybee, what 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 is a way for people to maybe cultivate the other bees, or is that not possible? Is it well, just yeah, we're focused on the honeybee? I think that's thing? a very good question, and and um, uh, uh, there are ways. Uh, first of all, you need you need to have uh, uh, wild nature, uh, yes. even in a small area, you know, uh, dead leaves. Uh, 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 we're obsessed with cleanliness and we con concrete over as soon as we can yep. uh, uh, wild areas, you know. And uh, in fact, many of the bees live in, in just in, in, in almost loose vegetation that's lying on the ground. So... Uh, or in hollow dead wood, you know. Yeah. Uh, so th there are there are things that you can, there are uh, kind of living areas that you can create with bamboo uh, tubes and stuff, and it's amazing to see how very quickly uh, uh, solitary bees begin to nest in those areas if you if you do it, and that and that can be very uh, enriching to see. Uh, I don't know if the, in the States you have those things. You can actually buy them in Europe. I'm sure you can in the States as I'm well. I'm sure, yeah. They're actually uh, con conceived to attract that kind of insect. That's fantastic. And you can get up on your wall in, the, in, the, in, the, in your yard, and you notice that the, the little holes in the bamboos or the, the, the uh, bits of dead wood are, are, are being filled in in the, yeah. in the spring. And uh, these things are uh, going to hatch out. So yeah, there are ways. I think that's awesome. Yeah, when 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 you were, <laughs> I almost, <laughs> I almost, you almost set me up there when you said something about. Well, I'm sure you can find those in the states. And I was getting ready to say, I'm sure we could probably buy them on Amazon. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, <laughs> well, I'm sure you can. <laughs> it seems like that's pretty much all you. <laughs> but uh, we have got a great guest with us today. Peter Hudson joins us here in our broadcast, and uh, you've written books. You've uh, you've acted bees, which I find fascinating for some reason. Uh, talk to me about being educated and, and coming up with, uh, in your education life. Cause you were, I understand it, it, you've been educated all over the, all over the planet. It seems you, you went to different universities and, and studied here and there. Talk to me about just having a thirst for knowledge. Uh, I'm not sure about a thirst for knowledge, to be truthful at, uh, at certain times of my life, I think I've had a search for knowledge. Yeah. I think as a younger guy, I wasn't terribly interested in, I think I was interested in being liked and uh, and being loved, actually. Uh, yes. Uh, for, for a long, long time. And I think that ties in with the acting. It ties in with um, my personal kind of arc. Uh, but um, I had a, a kind of classic British education. That's say, uh, my father was a uh, worked always away from the United Kingdom. So yeah, uh, I was educated in England, um, but not a great deal with my parents, so to speak, because um, he was uh, he was involved in agricultural schemes across uh, Africa and in the Middle East, in in the Yemen, and uh, and in sugar in South America, wow. and. Uh, we used to meet for the vacations, uh, and not all the vacations even, um, because he didn't have, strangely, he didn't have much money. Uh, and so in those days, flying was a serious business. And, uh, so we didn't always link up for our vacations as, as children. We were always a very close family and yet we didn't see each other very often. It was kind of contradictory. And so I was in a boarding school and a, a series of boarding schools um, and uh, in Britain. And I don't know if you've seen a film called If. I believe I have, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, that is about as close as you could get to the kind of school that I, I was raised in. Uh, and uh, it, they have advantages because you you have a kind of um, – there's an intensity to your life, your life because you yes. shut up in these places. And you have them in the States, I know. Uh, but um, uh, uh, and then I, but when I went to university, uh, suddenly I was let out of, first of all, a single-sex environment, yeah. which was – which obviously I've done everything to make sure my children didn't, didn't go through uh, since then. Yeah. Um, and uh, university was a kind of coming out, uh, uh, not in, not in this. Oh yeah, sense, yeah. A kind of uh, 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 a liberation, if you like. There you go. There you go. I love yeah. that. Yeah. Um, and so, um, oh, we could talk for hours. But, 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 <laughs> you know, for me, university is. Hey, you give me an opportunity with a smart guy like you. We will. <laughs> Now, uh, you have also done a lot of work, uh, you know, we, we talked about the acting and, and some of the other things that you've done, but you've also uh, done some, some voice work, narrations and things yeah. like this. Uh, how does that exactly work since, obviously, you're on location? Does someone give you a script and you go to a studio, or do you record it? And send it to them. How, how does that work? Yeah. That, well, that has been that. Uh, basically, yes. You, you. Uh, I get a call. I have a. I have a, an agent for acting, uh, for image, and I have an agent for voice. So I have yeah. two different agents for those activities. Wow. And my voice uh, agent uh, uh, looks for for as you say documentaries, uh, commercials. Obviously, is an important element because uh, financially, it's it's uh, interesting for her yeah. um, to to keep me uh, or her actors involved in commercials to some extent. Uh, and the, 
I have other kind of parallel things but as I'm based in Paris. Yeah. Uh, I do a lot of work for uh, museums, art galleries and stuff. That's fantastic. Because they need, they need an English voice on their exhibitions. So that's an ongoing thing, you know, the Louvre or, or, or the Grand Palais or whatever. They need their exhibitions to have a, a, a voice guide. So that's kind of bread and butter. Uh, work in the voice business for me. Hey, that's great. That's great work if you can get it, and I'm glad you're getting it. That's that's fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so I noticed that you've also, uh, which that th th this is fascinating. I'm going to have to find this if this exists somewhere on the web. But uh, according to some of the research that I found, you either voiced. Or was involved somehow in a Frank Sinatra project somewhere? According to your, like your your resume oh, here, it said something about Frank Sinatra or America's Golden Age. You did this in like 2015. Right. That, it was a, it, that's right. It was a, a a documentary made by a French filmmaker about <laughs> Sinatra. That's fantastic. Uh, uh, and they asked me to do the narration for, for, for yeah, the golden age of Frank Sinatra. So I, I learned a fair amount about Frank Sinatra um, uh, that I didn't know. In fact, yeah. we don't know very much about many of our stars. And more recently, I did a, worked on a fascinating film about uh, Charlie Chaplin. Wow. Which is a, it's a, it's a, a two-hour uh, film, which, which I mean, it could come out in the in the movie theaters. It's a, uh, um, and I learned a great deal about about him that I didn't know. Uh, the, yeah. the How he was actually ejected from the United States um, uh, and never went back. Uh, yeah. And uh, I I hadn't realized how closely he was involved with the McCarthy uh, and the and the, the Hoover era oh yeah and, those uh, guys <laughs> i'll interview some of those I'll, I'll interview a lot of those different folks or people that were in that era on the on the radio show sometimes and i'm just fascinated by some of the things that the united states has done over the years <laughs> and you're you're you're, yeah. you're hitting it on the head there it's it, he gets involved with those guys and then he's just he's gone and then he's just out of the United States. That's right. Well, he, he, he wanted to go back to Europe, but they, he wasn't told that he was going to be, <clears throat> his visa was going to be removed. And they waited till he got into the, onto the ship. And he was, he had gone out of New York Harbor uh, when wow. he learned that his visa was not going to be renewed. Uh, so he couldn't come back. Yeah. Just... And then they invited him back, of course, uh, to give him an award. Uh, for of the course golden... they did. Yes, when he was 90 or something. And it was yes. extremely moving. I had never seen footage of that. Uh, he, you know, Hollywood on that standing ovation for this little old guy. <clears throat> he was in tears and... Yeah, it was very moving, very moving. But he he, he contributed a great deal to the cinematographic yes. industries, no doubt, no doubt. Yes, he did. Now... Uh... You've also been in some video games. Have you like voiced video games or something? Yes, I've voiced some vid video games. Yeah, yeah, a bit of everything, as you say, James. Really, we, uh, we, it uh, what comes up. Yes. Uh, I, well, I, just I, looking I, at your resume here, that I I just happen to find this on your website, which is amazing. Here, I wish I would have found this a couple of days ago. It would have saved, saved saved me a little bit of work. But uh, yeah, documentaries, you've been in some cartoons. Just I love doing cartoons. Is great because because I particularly early on when I I I had a friend who was a, who was a producer of uh, cartoon cartoons and he used to say we don't really need all these voices you know we we uh, one woman one guy and <laughs> you do all the voices and he used to get us in for three days and you'd do all the voices that was a fantastic uh, it was it was a challenge but it was also very empowering which is one american word i i i find extremely um useful yeah well, we don't I, use in, in Europe empowering. 
I think it's great that you've done a little bit of everything. Just just the fact that you were able to uh, to to do as as much of the uh, much of the work and still continue to to work. I uh, I find it fascinating that you voice uh, for museums and art openings and things like this, and that kind of keeps you keeps you active and keeps you going. I think that's that's great. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I, I mean, since the COVID, the acting itself has been fairly quiet. I had a theatre project that I was going to direct, which was cancelled. Uh, and uh, so everything slowed down, definitely. But I'm sure the acting will come back. Obviously, as you get older, the number of roles uh, uh, diminish. And, yes. Uh, and people survive quite a long time. So there are still quite a few of us knocking around trying to pick up those, those uh, <laughs> interesting roles. But you never know. I mean, it takes a phone call. And then well, it, yeah, and that, and I say that all the time, you know, that, that it, it, either negative or positive. Oh, they got the phone call. <laughs> the one thing I find, and getting back to, to what we were talking about at the beginning with Highlander, um, just seeing the reaction online and seeing various things like that. There was a deal the other day, which I'm not shocked that this doesn't happen more. Uh, I think it was uh, a couple of pro wrestlers from AEW, which is kind of a startup company. They were sword fighting at a Comic-Con, just screwing around. And it happened to be the same sword fight at Comic-Con that Adrian Paul was attending. And he walks out there with his sword, and they immediately drop their swords and back up. And, <laughs> and I'm like, the pop culture reaction to this stuff, I am not... I am just totally, totally shocked that someone is not somewhere come up with, a, as I used to say, a big bag of money and got a hold of all of you guys from the Highlander series and put a movie together. Because I think that would just be, you know, back the Brinks trucks up and fill them with money, guys. It's <laughs> Well, they had this. I mean, Adrian, as you know, uh, there were a series of Highlander movies. Yes. Uh, after after the first one but maybe maybe i mean i i thought about it also recently but when when they contacted me about this uh upcoming com uh online yeah and i thought there are still quite a lot of the the original guys knocking around there. oh yeah uh, uh it would be interesting to do a kind of renaissance um something yes because yeah, I, I, I i see so many of these you know, like like I was talking with a with a a band promoter friend of mine the other day, and we were talking about all these different you know groups that are still out there. And when they do when when concert promoters do these events, they bring in these '80s bands, you know, Poison and Motley Crue and all these things. They sell these buildings out because people remember that music. They either grew up on it or whatever. And I just think about you know, talking to you and Adrian and some of these different people from Highlander. And I'm like, my God, you could do, you could do just a continuation or an update or something. And it didn't, it, it could be a TV movie, whatever. And you could make so much money on that because everybody'd be like, Oh my God, Highlanders, but you know, all that. I, I just think it would be well, you should, amazing. You should, uh, you should be one of the producers. Of the, oh, my uh, God. Yeah. No one yeah. wants that. <laughs> now, you mentioned earlier doing doing the cartoon work um, and how fun that is. It, is, is it because of the, the voice work? Is, is it because you're not being seen and you can just be behind the microphone and just... Well, yeah, and and just a, a voice get, comes out of your body, you know. I, oh no, it's <laughs> you know that kind of thing. And you, think, this That's is awesome. really me, you know. This yeah. is, <laughs> or, or and and also, you know, psychologically, I mean, these people really exist, you know. <laughs> you have to make them really exist, don't you? That's right. So, you know, that, I mean, all that's great fun. Well, I know just from 
seeing different things over the years. Mark Hamill, his version of the Joker on the Batman uh, <laughs> cartoons. People just love the crap out of that. And it's it, it's the same thing. He just manipulates his voice and all yeah, the various yeah. things. It's, 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 a, it's a very um, testing exercise. I mean, it's a very good exercise. But it's also very... Uh, it gives a lot of joy. I mean, to the to yeah. the individual, and I think laughter is is important. Now, you've also, uh, according to your to your resume here, you've done some singing as well. Oh yeah, I I must tell you, James, that I have a group, uh, which uh, we're only two, <laughs> and it, it's, a, it's a COVID. It's a kind of COVID experience. But um, yeah, I've always sung. I've always sung. I was in groups when I was when I was a kid. When I was yes. between uh, sixteen and twenty-three, and it, we got to the stage where we either had to start taking it really seriously or 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 stop. Uh, yeah. And we we did like so many young bands do. We broke up, and everybody went their different ways. One of our lead guitarists, a guy called Dave Froggart, who became a, a, a music producer in Australia and, and he's still playing uh, music uh, he, he, um, and the and one or two others disappeared but I've always I've always been involved in in rock and roll that's so, great um, yeah so I have five or six songs which um, we've got to finish mixing but over the covid period we've put together uh, with a friend and uh, they're basically on the theme of uh, confinement and freedom and I mean you know but uh, but yeah I, I'm very exercised by music <laughs> I'm just sitting here thinking you know you're, you're describing your music experience and then I think about some of the other things maybe we'll do this Highlander reboot and it'll be a musical there were so many of you guys on that show that <laughs> you you sing and act and do all these things. Well, uh, I'm not sure if Adrian sings, but uh, but yeah, why not? <laughs> why not? <laughs> do a Highlander the musical? Oh, and, and, and sell tickets. People would come to it. I'd I, I'd be there the whole nine yards. It's it's great. So, well, what about? Can I ask you something yes. about yourself? Uh oh, I mean, oh boy, here we your, go. <laughs> what is your trajectory that brought you to to have this kind of uh, Slightly edgy radio show. <laughs> Slightly edgy. That's fantastic. <laughs> you know, I started doing radio. This is amazing. I started doing radio in 93, and I would listen to local radio, and I'm like, I'm better than those people. And <laughs> then I just started interviewing anybody and everybody, and I literally will interview anyone that will talk to me about anything. And I've interviewed a little bit of everybody. Like you know, we we just got back from Chicago at the at the at the adult video uh, convention. I've interviewed like the Nitty Gritty Dirt Band and Eddie Money. Um, I interview authors. I've interviewed Dean Koontz and Mary Higgins Clark and folks like you and Adrian Paul and my great heroes. But but so you and you've managed to find a way to remain. Uh, I was going to say non-political. It isn't uh, exactly that, but uh, to remain um, un un um, unfettered by by any particular uh, group of of. Uh, uh, ideal, ideologically driven people. What I think is funny about this is I wore, <laughs> this is amazing, another amazing story. I can't believe I'm telling you stories. Um, you, 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 you've got so many stories, you know, it, it, but, um, I worked on a conservative talk radio station and was told I was too liberal. And then I worked for a liberal talk radio group and I was told I was too conservative. So I like to think I'm in the middle, which is awesome. <laughs> um, I have a lot of, you know, I, I look at both sides as they're really, realistically, they're all con men. 
<laughs> you, 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 look at the, you, you look at the conservatives and they are so worried about, oh my God, we're going to have this Marxist progressive, oh my God, the world's going to blow up. Somebody's going to go take Bill O'Reilly's house from him. But then <laughs> I see things where the progressives are, you know, they've got a lot of goals, but they've got to realize that in this environment, it's just truly never going to happen. And then you look at things like, and I, I hate to get into this with you because I know that there's going to be all sorts of things, and you're probably just going to have a big smile on your face like you do now. But then there was this thing where we lived through Donald Trump as the president of the United States. How is that even real? <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And then absolutely. you think about the fact that most people, and I say this all the time, and, and if you say this to conservative people, oh, my God, their, their, their hair ignites. But a lot of people fell in love with a wrestling promo, man. He gets up there and he starts... I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do that. And it's like, you're not going to do any of that. <laughs> it's not going to happen. Well, I, I agree with something you were saying earlier, which is that, in fact, at least what I understood you yes. saying is it's not just a binary thing of, of either you're left or you're right, uh, you're black or you're white, you're uh, right or you're wrong. Yes. Think much more, a much more complex and in order to to progress we really need to accept that things are more complex and yes try and get to grips with the complexity of things yes and maybe we will we will move forward you know well and what i always find fascinating and i've started doing this fairly recently with some of my political guests <laughs> i will uh i will bring up things that the other side that they portray to hate has said or I'll present them in a different light. And a lot of times I get these people to agree with each other. And I'm like, you know, we pretty much are all the same. If we could just get away from some of this ideology. Like yesterday I had this, I had this woman on who was railing and screaming about the conservatives and the righties' favorite thing to yell and scream about, critical race theory. And I said, you know, don't you just, do you realize at some point this is just a distraction? And it's distracting us from the fact that in the United States, we don't have a proper health care system. <laughs> and she sits there and she, and then after a while, she's like, oh yeah. And I'm like, you just agreed with a progressive viewpoint. Or I'll get the progressives on and I'll be like, you know, the conservatives, they're not really conservatives because like with George W. Bush, when he was in the White House, he spent like a drunken sailor. He wasn't a conservative. And then they all start like, yeah. And I'm like, if we could just get all these people together somehow, Peter, yeah. That's right. <laughs> we could change the world. Absolutely right. It's, I agree with you. It's I agree just with you. amazing. You keep doing it. Oh, I'm going to keep doing it because uh, cause I, I, All of a sudden. I love talking to you. I love talking to I don't know if you can everybody. see me. I, I yes. See I've still got you. you. I've still got you. It's probably my camera on my end, which is fine. I can still see you. I can still hear you. You are fantastic, my friend. Okay. Well, James, I can't hear you. You're, you're breaking up. Um, but, um, well, l let me do this. Let me do this. I am gonna, I'm gonna hang up with Peter, and I'm gonna call him right back because I don't want to lose this. So I'm gonna call him right back. I'm gonna see if that fixes it. Does that fix the problem? We're gonna see if I can just call him back. I'm gonna call him back because I don't want to lose this. We are almost done. I don't want to lose this. We're going to see what happens here. I don't want to go out on a bad note. Oh, I think it was his laptop. Damn it.
were having such a fun conversation there. Dang it. You've got to love technology. Modern technology. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Did it did it fix it? Yeah, it seems okay. There's a little bit I, of a I hung you know, up and I came back. We were yeah. we were so close to being done. <laughs> I didn't want to leave it on a bad note, my man. So, uh, so Peter, uh, I, I, this has been a fascinating interview, just from top to bottom. Uh, having you interview me, which is which is just good lord. As a fan of your work, I'm sitting here going, "Is this real?" <laughs> What is going on here? What is my life? <laughs> oh, it was, it, 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 uh, it's what you call a dialogue. Yes. It, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. It's been very, very pleasurable. Yes. And I definitely we, want to do this again. Touch. We'll try and keep it in, in, in touch, James. And, yes. And when you set up the production of the Highlander movie, you let me know. <laughs> That's right, and I'll set up Highlander the musical. <laughs> okay, well, all the best to you. Yes, Peter, have yourself a wonderful day. Thank you for doing this, sir. It's a pleasure. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. There he goes. Bye -bye. That is Peter Hudson. Holy smokes, we did it, kids. And uh, a little behind the scenes of this... I got up at 3 o'clock in the morning because he's 10 a.m. French time. Hey, you know, I will do anything I can to get content for this program. I'm, I'm just amazed. So that is that. Thanks for joining us. And we will inevitably, as they say... See you next time here on our big program.